KKU TV. Hello, everyone. This is Dale tonight, and I had a request from my good buddy Nick Johns, um, wanting to see um, the Grandma Stole Them All. This is Cotton Candy. Um, I'm just going to go over a little bit of uh, things with this tarantula. I get a lot of questions about her, so uh, thank you, Nick, for wanting me to do a feature on her because this will clear up a lot for a lot of people. Um, I'll get her out here in a second here. Um, first of all, uh, this Gramostola is actually called the Gramostola Species Mall. Um, it's from Mall, so uh, it's the Gramostola Species Mall. Uh, the common name, the Chilean Goat Fluff, is one of many common names that I've found, but the Chilean Goat Fluff seems to be the most consistent uh, throughout the world. Um, there are other ones out there. I can't remember them off the top of my head, but uh, the Chilean Goat Fluff is the one I kind of gravitated to because it was the one that I saw the most when I was doing research on this tea because I would, knew little to nothing about this tea before I bought it. Uh, she's a wild-caught specimen. She is not full-grown quite yet. And uh, her temperament, she can be a little skittish at times. She is a Gramasola. Um, I'll show you her temperament here. Um, she's generally pretty sweet. Uh, she's very docile. I can handle her. Um, as you can see here, she's in a little bit of a bad mood, but that's okay. I am kind of came out of nowhere with this. Uh, this is a good shot of her. Uh, how I got her name, Cotton Candy, I actually, when I got her out of the boxing, um, when she was uh, shipped to me, the first thing I noticed is how sweet she was, so I kind of gravitated to calling her Candy, and, and she has kind of these pinkish uh, hairs on her, and uh, yellow, goldish hairs on her, so she kind of looked like Candy to me, so I wanted to call her Candy. Um, my wife said she looked fluffy like cotton, and she came up without me even, without her even knowing that I was going to call her Candy thought maybe I should call her Cotton. So she said, why don't you just call her Cotton Candy? So that's how Cotton Candy got her name. Um, this tea, um, for a little quick care sheet, it's a basic setup just like a G. Rosea. Um, I fill up the water dish and I overflow it, and I make sure it, it goes down a little bit. Uh, she doesn't really care too much about uh, drinking out of this water dish or how much humidity is in here. She does fine with it. She does not use a hide. I just use a piece of... Uh, bark here. Um, she had a hide in here. She never used it. She kind of likes this. I use this a lot with some of my uh, more docile teas like my Afona Pelma Calcotes and my uh, other G. Rosea which is about her size. Uh, Whisper, uh, my G. Rosea female, which is about her size. Um, I don't give them hides. They kind of do better uh, with just this acts like a hide but doesn't really have it. Um, this Grandma Stola likes to climb so that's why I put this up here. Uh, she actually lays up here, as you can see the wet, the webbing there, she lays right here half the day. And the other half, she's down here. She webs up this leaf and she kind of sits over here. Um, she'll be getting an upgrade soon, but as you can see on the back of her abdomen, she'll be due for molt here in the next few months. So I'm going to hold out on uh, giving her anything a little bigger until I see exactly how big she's going to get after a molt. Um, Size-wise, I wouldn't think they would get any bigger than a G. Rosea, although I have seen and heard that these teas can get a little bit larger than a G. Rosea, um, but not by much. This one here is um, not as bulky. She's a little more skinnier than a G. Rosea, uh, but you, it, it's kind of an illusion because the, the hairs on her legs make her look a little more chunkier than she actually is. Um, other than that, uh, this is a great species. If you want one, I highly recommend it. If you can find one, get one because they are very, very beautiful. Her colors on her are starting to dull out a little more now that she's in, starting to reach pre molt She was much more vibrant when I got her. Um, but she's still very, very beautiful, and these are great teas. She's very docile. As you can see, she, she got a little... Um, it looked like she was upset, but I think she was uh, attacking the tongue because she thought there was a, a food. Uh, Food-wise, you will never, ever have to worry about this tea eating. You can put anything in there, and this tea is going to eat. It'll eat and eat and eat and eat. This tea has never gone on a fast at all, so that's quite different from any one of my G. Roseas, which fast regularly and go to two to three months without eating, even at this stage. So, um, so again, uh, highly recommend it. If you can get one, these are awesome teas. Um, can't tell you about the growth rate at all because um, I got this one at this size. 
and uh, this is a wild card, so I, I have no idea about the growth rate and uh, life expectancy on these, but awesome teas. I highly recommend them, so um, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, you will see her in the next Tarantula Cloud, Tarantula Cloud number 15, I believe. Uh, she has uh, She's in the feeding portion of that, so um, check that out. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Take care.